Listen up. A first for your kitchen table. The Agriculture Department okaying the sale of two varieties of genetically engineered apples that never brown and are always appearing to be fresh. Dr. Samadhi, what's up with that? Is this good or not? Well, <laughs> is it good? So th this is already approved. The train has taken off and U.S. Department of Agriculture actually approved the genetically modified uh, apples. So this guy, um, take a look, good picture of this because in 2017 you're going to see three times bigger size and, and it's going to last longer and it, the, the color is not going to turn brown. So the whole idea behind this genetically modified uh, technology mm -hmm. is the fact that the fruit can last longer. You have to use less chemicals and, and so you, in, in reality you would have less kind of issues with this. But there's a lot of debate about this. People think that if all of this engineering gets in our system, it can change the whole ecosystem of the bacteria. Can it cause cancer? We have no data to prove it. Can it really change your good bacteria and cause inflammation in the bowels? There are some studies that talk about these genetically modified fruits that can affect your kidneys and your liver. I think as long as it's labeled and people are aware of this, then I think it's okay. But this is in 80% of our food and vegetables, corn, soybean, cotton, it's everywhere and you can't avoid it. But as long as people know what they're getting, I mean, look at these strawberries. I was having a strawberry the other day. It's the size of a baseball. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's completely changed and it's not normal. Whether they're going to change our hormones or not, does it lead to diabetes or insulin resistance or obesity? I want to know what your opinion is. Uh, you know, this scares but it me. Sound it scares good. me. I mean, does, yeah, should I be scared or is it, food, uh, right? I mean, how do you know what it is and where it, what you're eating? You should well, be scared about the six eggs in a week, okay. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with that. You're scared about that. By the way, I Apples lower your cholesterol, and okay. apples give you uh, vitamin C, they give you high fiber, so I love apples. We brought a bunch of apples here today. We love apples. And there's an old expression from the 1860s, eat an apple on going to bed, and you'll keep the doctor from earning his bread. And that's where the original expression uh, apple a day keeps, keeps the, the doctor, doctor away. away. So we, I think apples are great. The issue here, though, is... His what, patients are eating a lot of apples. I, that's what that's I give them, oatmeal and apples. Yeah. We talked about oatmeal. Here, you know, when you eat an apple or when you slice an apple, the inside starts to brown almost immediately. So yeah. it's still fresh, but, you know, people don't like it aesthetically. Here's the problem, and the USDA has approved this, but the FDA is waiting to weigh in. I don't know whether these apples are going to need more insecticide, more pesticide, because it's possible that the browning has a protective mechanism against insects. That needs to be studied. So before we start doing all these genetic changes, and I think genetic changes can be bad, and I don't want our whole food supply affected. I don't know about you, but I like that apple's brown. Arctic granny, Arctic uh, delicious, whatever this is. I mean, I don't want this. I want food the way it was meant to be. Well, for and, certain, well, that's, certain, that, certain that, times, that, that, certain times. Sometimes it's a good. This is a big debate. Certain so, times it's there's, good. Yeah, there's certainly no real answer over here. For example, when it came to vitamin A, golden rice, that was a huge success. Wait, what's, wait, what's that? They made like the kind vitamin of rice a. that has yeah. a lot of vitamin A in it. Okay. And in certain countries where you don't have minerals, when you don't have nutrition, uh, poor countries, this can work really well. It can increase about 17% of the, the size of the crops, billions of dollars of industry. So in certain things work, but certainly here, Given the diabetes and obesity epidemic that we have, is it all sugar and salt? Or is it some of the things that we're putting in this guy that gets into our system and that we can have a discussion about this? We can, we can modify food to make it more insect resistant. Now, that's a good thing because then the crops are less perishable. In this case, we're doing it based on someone's aesthetic sense. You know, we want our salmon to be more orange looking. I don't want our salmon more orange looking. I like it when it's the way it swims originally. Natural. Apples, too. They're meant to brown. I would feel very yeah. weird eating an apple that never turns brown <laughs> on the inside. And I don't think they're proving that it's for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. David's point is a great one. Sometimes it's for very good population medical reasons. Like you want to make this apple more resistant to insects. If it turns out it's less resistant to insects, yeah, th bad. then it's more expensive. Right. Bottom still, line, still we don't know away. the long-term effect of yeah. some of these engineers in, in our body and what it does once it gets into our system. Okay. And I think the biggest thing is to have a label on any of these fruits yeah. and vegetables, right. as right. long which, as people know. Which they don't have the way, now, which is it's not the law now. In other words, as of now, right. you don't need the label, which and my, is bad. my yeah, apple I, is already turning okay, brown. That means so. we're eating the stuff now anyway. All right. We're eating it anyway, so you don't even know about it. Okay.